exactly what is the incremental analysis approach to decision making. Management in any organization must make hundreds of decisions. Although every situation is unique, management frequently uses the following decision making process. First, they need to analyze the situation in order to define the problem and assign responsibility for that problem to an individual. They then have to brainstorm possible alternative courses of action and evaluate each alternative using both financial and non-financial information, such as the pros and cons of each alternative. Based on the information available, they must choose one alternative. Once they've done that, they implement the alternative chosen and then they need to follow up by reviewing the outcomes and, if necessary, making adjustments. Accounting information is useful when evaluating alternatives in that they can provide information about relevant revenue and costs for each alternative. In addition, accounting information is useful in reviewing the results of past decisions. In both cases, management will want both financial information and non-financial information, such as the effect of the decision on things such as employee turnover and the company's brand awareness or reputation. What is incremental analysis and how can it help management in the decision-making process? In step two of the decision-making process, management must analyze the alternatives using financial information. Incremental analysis is used when performing this analysis because incremental analysis focuses on items, generally revenues and costs, which change between alternatives. Using this method, we don't look at the entire income statement for each alternative. Instead, we look at how operating income would change under each alternative. Incremental analysis is most often used in short-term decision-making, which is when management considers how to best use resources in the short term. They are typically operational in nature. The best way to understand incremental analysis is to use an example. Assume that you and your significant other are deciding between going to a movie or staying home and watching TV. You plan to buy a takeout dinner for $38. Afterwards, you plan to either return home and watch a rented movie, Disney Plus, $30, on the new TV you bought last week for $1,000. Or you plan to go to the theater for a movie, $26 for the tickets. If you go to the theater, you know you're going to buy popcorn and drinks, which will cost an additional $18. Using incremental analysis, analyze the alternatives. Step one of the incremental analysis is to explicitly state the alternatives. In this case, you have two alternatives, return home or go to the theater. Step two of incremental analysis is to decide which information is relevant. But what is relevant information? Relevant information are the revenues and costs which change between alternatives and will occur only in the future. Using only relevant information eliminates unnecessary data that could complicate the decision-making process and create confusion. Any information that is not relevant is irrelevant. What does that mean? It means that it does not have the capacity to impact the analysis and must be ignored. Using our understanding of relevant information, we can now move on with step two. Let's start with the takeout dinner for $38. It will happen in the future, but it does not change between the alternatives. Whether you and your significant other stay home or go to the theater, the $38 spent on dinner will be exactly the same. So the $38 is irrelevant because it does not meet both of the criteria of relevant information. It must be ignored for purposes of this analysis. What about the cost of renting the movie on Disney Plus, $30? This cost is a future cost. In addition, you only incur this cost if you choose to stay home, which means that the cost changes between alternatives. Therefore, this information is relevant with regards to returning home alternative and must be used in your analysis. Notice that I highlight in yellow because this cost is only incurred if you choose to return home, so it applies to that alternative only. What about the cost of the TV you bought last week, $1,000? The cost of the TV is a sunk cost. What is a sunk cost? A sunk cost does not change between alternatives and it occurs in the past 
not in the future. This cost cannot be changed, ever. It is therefore irrelevant and should never be included in incremental analysis. The cost of the TV is therefore ignored because it's irrelevant. Next is the cost of the tickets and the cost of the popcorn and drinks in the theatre. Both of these costs are future costs and you would only incur them if you chose to go to the theatre, which means that these costs change between alternatives. Therefore, these costs are relevant because they meet the criteria of relevant information. They both change between alternatives and they are future costs. Notice that I highlighted both costs in green because these costs are only incurred if you choose to go to the theatre, so they apply to that alternative only. We can now move on to step 3 of incremental analysis, which is to use a chart to compare the revenues, if applicable, and costs of each alternative. Column 1 is for the description, column 2 the first alternative, return home, column 3 for the second alternative, going to the theatre, and the final fourth column is for the difference in the costs between the two alternatives. I start with the first costs. Remember that there's no revenues in this example. Disney Plus rental is $30 and it is only incurred under the return home alternative, which is why I've placed it in the second column. Under go to theatre, I put a dash because there are no rental costs if you go to the theatre. The difference is calculated as column 2, return home, minus column 3, go to the theatre. So $30 minus 0 is equal to $30. The next cost, theatre tickets, is only incurred under the go to theatre option, which is why I've placed the cost in the third column. Under return home, I put a dash. Again, I calculate the difference as column 2, return home, minus column 3, go to the theatre. So 0 minus 26 is equal to negative 26. Note that the brackets in accounting indicate a negative number. The final cost, popcorn and drinks, is again only incurred under the go to theatre option. So I again place it in the third column. Under return to home, I put a dash. Column 2, return home, minus column 3, go to theatre, is equal to 0 minus 18, which is equal to negative 18. We can now add up all the columns. Return to home is equal to $30, go to theatre is equal to $44, and the difference is equal to negative 14. Notice that the total column can also be calculated as 30 minus 44, which is again equal to negative 14. What exactly is this telling us? We're comparing go to theatre with return home. It's telling us that the second alternative, go to theatre, will cost you and your significant other $14 more than the return to home alternative. In financial terms, which is what we're doing, a quantitative analysis, going to the theatre will cost you $14 more than staying home. This completes our quantitative analysis of the two alternatives. We move on to step 4 of incremental analysis, which is to consider non-financial factors. Non-financial considerations are called qualitative factors, and you need to consider these factors every time you make a decision. What exactly are qualitative factors? Quantitative factors are when we complete an analysis which is expressed in numbers or dollars. Qualitative factors are non-financial in nature, and they are not easily quantified or measured. They tend to be subjective in nature and often involve a company's values or prospects. They can include things such as customer satisfaction, the effect of a decision on employees, or the relationship a company has with their vendors. You may also have to consider the impact of your decision on the company's reputation in the industry. Qualitative factors are any factors which are non-financial but should be considered because, if ignored, they can have serious implications with regards to the company's future. With regards to our example, what qualitative factors can we consider? You and your significant other might want to consider which alternative would be more enjoyable. Which alternative might cause you less stress? For instance, if you're short on funds, then going out to the theatre might cause more stress or friction than returning home alternative. And finally, you might want to consider the ease of the choice because it's a lot easier to get up from the sofa at the end of the movie than it is to get into your car and drive home from a theatre. Step 5 of the incremental analysis process is to make a decision. 
I'm not sure what you would have decided here. That's something between you and your significant other. That's it for incremental analysis, but let's go through the steps you would have to perform. Step one is to read the information and explicitly state the available alternatives. Step two is to determine which information for both revenues and costs are relevant and which are irrelevant. Step three is to create a chart to compare the relevant revenues and costs for each alternative and to calculate the difference in financial terms. This is called a quantitative analysis. Step four is to analyze the non-financial factors called qualitative factors. Step five is to make a decision, taking into account not just the quantitative factors, but also the qualitative factors. That's it for the steps in applying incremental analysis. What types of short-term decisions can we apply incremental analysis to? We can use it to decide if we should accept or reject a special order from a customer, whether we should make a part or product, or if we should buy it from an outside supplier if we should sell a product as is or if we should process it further into a different product, whether we should keep old equipment or scrap it and buy new, when we decide to keep an existing product or product line or discontinue it, and finally, if we have a scarce resource, which products should we produce first? All of these short-term decisions use incremental analysis and I'll cover them all in future videos. As always, thanks so much for watching.